Hello and welcome to Wellness Wednesday. I'm James Curry with Communication Department here at MCHD, and I'm talking to Royce and Sonora, and we're talking about uh, Breastfeeding Awareness Month, which is in August, and they're in uh, two different programs here at MCHD, and I'll let them introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about their program. So ladies, go right ahead. Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Roy Smith. I'm the Maternal and Child Health Program Coordinator for the Mobile County Health Department. My program, it basically entails helping women and their children find any resources that they may need in the Mobile County area. Um, we deal with maternal mortality prevention. We deal with uh, child immunization, child nutrition. Uh, one of the promotion things that we deal with is safe sleep. And another thing that we also promote is breastfeeding, which is great because this is Breastfeeding Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. All right, Sonora, tell, tell me about your program that you work with. Hi, everyone. I am Sonora McCracken. I am the coordinator of the Lead Poisoning Prevention Program here at the Health Department. Um, so the goal of the program is to keep Alabama's kids lead free. Uh, we do that in three steps. One is to know the facts. Uh, so that just looks like knowing what lead is and the sources of lead and what that means for you or moms and their children. Uh, two is to get your home <laughs> tested. And then three is to get your child tested. And we'll talk a little bit more about those later. <clears throat> yeah, we, you know, we we're talking about breastfeeding and that's obviously, you know, we bring awareness to it in August. But I mean, there's still 11 more months of this year that it still is equally as important. So. Um, and I'm no expert here. Uh, I'm leaving that up to you all. Uh, but I do have some questions that I have that I need to ask you. Uh, so tell me, um, you know, there's obvious benefits for breastfeeding. So tell me the benefits for the mother, for the child, uh, all of those benefits. So yes, breastfeeding can help prevent babies um, from, well, protect babies from some short and long-term illnesses and diseases. Uh, breastfeed babies uh, have a lower risk of asthma, obesity, type 1 diabetes, and it also helps lower the risk of SIDS. Breastfeeding babies are also less likely to have ear infections and stomach bugs. It also helps assist the mom with weight loss after their pregnancy. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, we really want to make sure that moms are breastfeeding safely. Um, and one way to do that is to know your risk of lead poisoning. Uh, mm -hmm. There are no set levels <clears throat> of lead, but the good news is it can be prevented. Um, kids exposed, exposed to lead can have an array of issues from developmental delays, behavioral problems, um, issues with their kidneys, uh, brain development issues, um, a lot of just different really hard issues that uh, can affect these children. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why I'm here is because moms can actually expose their babies to lead by breastfeeding. Um, so I'm here to give a little bit of information about how that can be done um, and when you should talk to your doctor. <clears throat> yeah, so if, if um, mom, you know, works in a certain area, uh, you know, around lead, um, you know, she's being exposed to lead. So let's talk a little bit about that. Like if you work in, you just give an example of some of those industries and, you know, what mom needs to do. Sure, absolutely. Um, so if mom or her spouse works in construction, um, manufacturing, pipe fitting, um, automobile industries, glass uh, production, rubber production, um, there's an array of different industries. Mm -hmm. Welding, um, so fabricating, we can, yeah. Yes, yeah. welding, fabricating. Um, what can happen is mom or dad can bring particles of lead dust home and then expose baby to lead. Um, and then, of course, if mom works in that industry, she's being exposed. And again, it can be passed to the baby through the breast milk. So if you do work in one of these industries, you don't have to be afraid. Uh, but I do encourage you to talk to your provider so that your provider is aware of your risk and you two can decide together if you should safely breastfeed. Um, mm -hmm. Because breastfeeding is a really good nutritional choice for your baby. <clears throat> Which brings me to my next question. Tell me why. Tell me exactly why it's a good choice. Well, 
Um, breast milk is the best source of nutrition for babies. Like I stated earlier, it also um, helps meet all the nutritional needs for the baby. Uh, it helps babies to fight off infections such as ear infections. It helps lower the risk of SIDS. It also helps uh, moms lower the risk of hypertension, uh, type 2 diabetes, cancer, et cetera. So it's very uh, beneficial for both mom and baby. Uh, the nutrition that the baby receives from the mom is also something that's going to help the baby thrive throughout their process of growing. Yeah, we, yeah. we, uh, yeah. we, we are proponents of breastfeeding. So please continue about that here at the health department. Yeah, I wanted to just add on to what Roy said about, you know, it's a good nutritional choice and to add um, as far as what type of nutrition the mom can help consume um, to help limit the risk of lead exposure that we talked about earlier. Um, so if you make good food choices and increase your calcium, um, if you increase your iron, so that's foods such as like your green vegetables, your red meats, your yogurts, um, your low fat milks, all of those really help mom limit the amount of absorption of lead. Therefore, we're keeping the baby healthy. <clears throat> so we, we've been able to determine that, let's say, you know, mother is able to breastfeed. Um, they've checked with their provider. How long, realistically, can they breastfeed a child? It's recommended that babies breastfeed for at least six months but there is no limit. Uh, if the mom is able to go longer than six months, it's definitely encouraged for that mom to go longer than six months. It all depends on the mom and the baby and, you know, what's comfortable for them. <clears throat> now, I know that babies don't come with instruction manuals. Uh, they, they, don't, they don't give that to you in the hospital, but the baby has its own built-in instruction manual, and it has signs that it can tell you that it's ready to breastfeed. So what are some of those signs that the baby will give to the mom? So some of those signs would basically be just paying attention to your baby. As a mom, it's almost like many people will say it's just uh, a feeling that you get. Also, just paying attention to the baby, uh, mainly grabbing at the mom's breast or maybe the baby uh, making sucking noises or faces or the baby putting their hand up to their mouth and certain things like that you'll be able to pay attention for and you'll have an instinct to know hmm, my baby may be hungry so it's just some things that as a mom you would have to pay attention to very close attention mm -hmm. to and uh, once you get the hang of things and you start paying attention to your baby and you learn your baby you'll know what your baby is going to let you know that they're hungry or they're ready to feed. Built-in instruction manual, I love it. <laughs> um, now how long, how long does each breastfeeding session or how long should it last? Does it vary? I mean? It varies per child. Um, usually it's about 15 minutes to 20 minutes uh, for your baby. But um, it's mainly you want to just pay attention to your child. Once again, uh, your child will let you know when they're done. Uh, your child will let you know, you know, when they need to keep going. Uh, also, you as a mom, you have to do what's comfortable. If something is getting uncomfortable on one side, it's okay to stop and switch sides with the breast when it comes to feeding. It all depends on your child and the moments in which you determine what's good for you. <clears throat> Anything else, Sonora, to add about that? I know. All right. Well, um, let's wrap up here and tell people how they can get in touch with you uh, and each one of your programs, because I know each of you, you know, cover different areas, but, you know, you complement each other and there's a lot of overlap, especially with, uh, you know, this subject. So, uh, Sonora, go ahead and tell us first how to get in touch with you. Um, you can email me at S McCracken. That's M as in Martha, C-C-R-A-C-K-E-N at mchd.org. Um, contact me anytime if you need some more information about lead. Um, if you're concerned and you need to, you know, find out if you could be at risk or um, some more information about what makes you at risk and how to safely breastfeed your baby as it relates to lead poisoning, please reach out to me. All right. Now, Royce, tell us how to get in touch with you. Yes, I can be reached at rsmith, S-M-I-T-H, 
at mchd.org. Please feel free to reach out to me if any information that you may have about maternal and child health, I'm more than willing to help as best I can. Thank you for being on here. You know, we, our goal, uh, or one of many goals is healthy moms and healthy babies. And, you know, we appreciate your time and being on this program to talk about this during Breastfeeding Awareness Month. So ladies, thank you again for being on Wellness Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you.